Welcome everyone to the Revenue Excellence Summit Sales Fever. I'm David Delaney, the CEO of Tenbound, and we're talking today visioning the future of sales with an esteemed panel of sales tech CEOs. And so I am super excited to dive in. The sales tech industry is in major flux right now. There's so much new technology that's coming out in the marketplace. And I want to dive in on what is the future of this topic and with my esteemed panel of, of CEOs. So we've got uh, Jason Dorfman, Evan Lang, and Jonathan Friedman. Jason, how are you doing today? Good, good. Excited to kick us off. So start with just a, a quick intro and background. So I'm Jason. I'm the CEO of Orem. Uh, we're a sales platform that helps SDRs, inside sales reps, get into more live conversations uh, over the phone in a fun and collaborative way. I've uh, spent over 13 years in sales now. Most recently was the first sales hire at Rubric, where I built out their SDR and inside sales team and uh, took it global. And yeah, excited to chat about this topic. Pass it to uh, Evan. Hi, everyone. My name is Evan Liang. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Lean Data. Lean Data is the leader and pioneer in a space called revenue orchestration. And so we actually partner really closely with your sales ops or rev ops teams to ensure that your reps get the right leads. So we, we, we ensure that any inbound lead, outbound lead or anything of that sort gets to the right rep through lead routing and uh, matching. And uh, we've kind of been pioneering that space. So when we work well, the sales team's uh, job should be a whole lot easier without them having to do anything different. Uh, and I'm excited for this topic because uh, over the past 10 years, we've kind of seen the sales tech space really, really evolve. And I'm excited to talk with uh, my esteemed colleagues about what the future looks like. I'll pass it over to Jonathan. Thanks, Evan. Uh, hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm CEO and co-founder of a company called Demostack. Uh, demo stack helps you spin out, build, and deliver uh, demos um, and across your entire org. A demo and the demo is really the last bastion of unmanaged revenue. There's systems to manage pretty much everything, but the demo stage, which is such a critical stage in every sales process, is unmanaged. Um, if you think about it, like what's uh, what, what's what's the one tool that you need to to manage that piece. And so DemoStack um, is really set and, and the mission is to help everyone be a better product storyteller and essentially manage that um, demo operation piece, which happens because you need to sync so many people around delivering and showing what the product looks like and we help you show your product in the best light. Uh, I'm also very excited to talk about this topic. I think um, revenue, um, revenue technology has, 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 has gone a, a long way and if you don't have the right stack, you're you're essentially left behind. It's like not using a phone. You know, you're, you're not relevant in the in the modern uh, competitive space. So uh, happy happy to talk about uh, all these topics and excited to be in this panel. Thank you, David. Big time, and thanks MSP for putting this on. This is so interesting because we're all taking it from a different angle. We've got commu the communication aspect. Uh, with uh, Jason, we've got the routing and organization aspect with um, Evan and with Jonathan, we've got the deep dive on the demo. So that there's all different ways to, to look at this problem. And, uh, you know, we've seen so much innovation and so much change happening in the sales technology space that it's almost head spinning right now. Um, we, we maintain an, a market map of all the companies we think that are involved in sales technology. And literally we haven't been able to update it lately because there's so many new technologies coming out and new ways to look at the problem. And so um, taking it from those different angles, Jason, how do you think emerging technologies will, will redefine sales processes and customer interactions? And what are you seeing with how folks are using uh, Orem? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I think about the way the space is emerging in a sense that what is old is new again. I think if you go back hundred years ago, sales was really about this interpersonal interaction. And when I think back to my first sales job in 2010, it was a lot of CRM updating, clicking, manually dialing the phone. And I think that the software has gotten a lot more powerful over the past 
few years. And I think that's really allowed sellers to really unleash their full potential, spend more of their time um, doing what we all hope to do, which is sales and interacting with the customer and um, serving them better. So I think that that's a really positive trend that's worth getting excited about. I think, um, you know, going from 2010, maybe into the, um, you know, 2015 or so, I think there was a lot of tools that focused on managing and tracking sales reps. And one of the reasons we started Orem is we wanted to build a tool that really did the hard parts of sales for them, that really empowered them. And, um, you know, by accelerating the sales rep, you're accelerating the sales team. So I think with AI, you're seeing a lot more of that. You're seeing tools that are making a meaningful impact to their productivity uh, rather than just being a database or something that tracks their activity. So um, it's definitely an exciting time for uh, sales tooling. There's a lot of competition as well, but um, all in all, I think it's a, it's a big win for people that are in the field. So it's, it's like, it's releasing, you know, the salespeople from having to do all this manual stuff and really focusing on interacting with the customers live, which is why we got into sales in the first place, you know, and, uh, and being able to, to contact them in the first place when it's so hard today to just get even that initial meeting set up. And um, Evan, when you think about the organization and prioritization that's so critical for sales, uh, how are you seeing these emerging technologies redefine the processes? Yeah, and I actually think we're at an interesting crossroads right now coming out of the pandemic uh, and, and going forward. I, I actually am starting to see that we as a sales tech or sales leaders have a really good, great chance to kind of redefine what it looks like. So some of the trends I'm hearing uh, when I talk to fellow CEOs who are in sales tech and outside of it is some of the old playbooks aren't really working anymore. You know, your pure SDR outbound playbook is, is, is not as effective as it was beforehand. And I, I actually think uh, as an industry, we've spent a lot of time really focused on like uh, really like optimizing each function and the activities that they do individually in silos. Uh, I kind of compare it to like the auto industry in like the 1970s and 90s, 80s, where the GMs and the Fords were really good at just making every step in the factory as efficient as possible so they could pump up as much volume into, uh, at the end. But what ended up happening is they kind of ended up building kind of crappy cars because they didn't think about the end-to-end -end process. And that's where you saw like the Toyotas of the world come in with like total quality management and be like, wait a second, it's not just about optimizing each individual world. We have to look at the entire buyer's journey. Um, and I do think we're going to face that uh, coming up uh, with some things like the SDR outbounds not working as well, is that we're going to need to think about the buyer's journey and it's actually going to have to manage better the interactions between each of the different steps uh, and not just simply about optimizing each individual role. So I think we're on the cusp of that in the next five to 10 years. AI will certainly help and be part of that, but I think people need to stitch all the roles together. Um, and we're seeing that across our customers. We sit across multiple go-to-market motions from an orchestration perspective. But I think that's what's coming in my in my in my in my sense is a better focus on the customer journey and not just optimizing the walls so big time yeah um and you know we, we work with a lot of sdrs and you know the the question becomes if sending a hundred emails doesn't work anymore how about 200 how about 300 and it's like wait a minute we're how do actually people find out about new technologies and and how do they actually become interested and take a meeting and it's like starting from that angle is much more aligned with the go-to-market versus just volume you know and and we know we're on the we're on the receiving end of a lot of those and that's just one example you think about sales reps customer success it's it's all sort of let's keep doing the the processes from 20 years ago and it's almost like antibiotic resistance so it's interesting and, and jonathan if, if you dive in in that that demo process i mean how are the how are the new technologies redefining how you think about that yeah i, th I think there's a, a massive uh shift happening and i think we're, that's where the battlegrounds are going to be between all the biggest players in revenue mm. ops and that's like it's really thinking about either top 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 down or bottom up so what we talked about about you know stuff that we did 20 years ago mm. um 
you know, and uh, you would have an activity and then you need to report on that activity. So I made a phone call. I need to now write. I did a phone call. I uh, and 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 I need to, I need to explain what I did. I wrote an email. I need to have that in and some kind of help. There were some tools, you know, in Salesforce, you can log it better. But now what's happening, I think a lot a lot of players are trying to, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, dissent the dominance of the Salesforce and say, like, hey, you know what? I know from the bottom up what people are doing. So the reporting becomes second, like second nature to that. There's no separate activity that needs to happen. Uh, if you look at the, at the, at the gongs and, uh, you know, and, 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 um, and uh, outreaches and sales loft of the world, like, hey, I know every email they're sending. I know every call they're making. I know uh you know uh the, the calls they're having i'm connected to the calendar so why why do i need and to send it to a different database i can be the database and i think that's where um where where, where, where things start being very interesting because then you you get this the, this opposite switch of course from, i look at it from the demo perspective like currently nobody has any idea what you're showing you know what you're saying maybe if you record calls and you can do spot checks you have no idea what your people are showing you have no idea the sequence you have no idea how your best rep, uh, what your best rep is showing versus your worst. Uh, you definitely don't know compare between them. You don't know if like which feature is connected to a good demo or not. So there's a, ma- a demo specifically uh, has a massive, massive blind spot. But I think in general the trend is also um, how do you go from b- bottom up and have the the, the 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 activities naturally inform the the sales forecasting versus the opposite way around. Yeah. No, it's amazing. There's there's sort of like a digital exhaust, you know, happening behind the scenes. And a lot of companies, they, they don't look at all the stuff that the sales reps and the SDRs are doing and how can they actually leverage that information. And, and more and more, you see, uh, I mean, the, I'm going way back, but it was like, hey, if it's not in Salesforce, it doesn't exist. And it's like that was ter- trying to remind the salespeople to put notes in Salesforce. I mean, that seems so archaic now because, uh, you know, like you were saying, it, it's, there's so much happening there that, that could be captured, analyzed and, and used to improve. And you know, Gong is a great example of that. So that's been super successful. And, you know, I, I throw it over to Jason. What, what steps do you think companies right now should take to prepare for, uh, the trends that are coming up in, in sales technology. If, if they're looking at these market maps and all these different um, badges that everybody has, um, how, how should they think about um, aligning their sales technology with the pr- um, processes that they're doing now? Yeah, you know, founding a sales tech company, I think when founders come to me, a lot of the times they're asking like, what tool should I buy? What mm-hmm. should my sales tech stack look like. And I, I wish that that was a magic bullet that would automatically, if they just bought the right tools, automatically their sales team would have an amazing process, an amazing comp plan. They'd have the right people in the chair. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I think that there, there's no magic bullet there. So I think when people are starting off, they need to think about some of the fundamentals that honestly don't relate to the sales tools at all. Um, are you using a common language across your sales team when you're talking about deals? whether that's medic or another type of framework. So you're not just causing, you know, mass confusion as you're trying to navigate what you're supposed to do next. Um, Are your opportunity stages set up in a way that makes sense? There's no one way to do that, but are you, are all the people on your team, when I say, you know, what's the definition of an opportunity in your organization, are they all giving you the same answer? And do you have the incentives in place for them to adhere to that? So I think, um, and then of course there's, you know, comp plans, the, hiring profile. I mean, all of those things need to be in place before your sales tooling is going to have an impact. I think once you get all that right, you have the right process in place, you have the right person in the chair selling, then it makes sense to spend as much money as you need on the right sales tools. Like just like any professional athlete, like you're not going to skimp on their equipment. But I think that, um, you know, people fetishize the tools a little bit and they think that this is going to solve all their process problems. And I just don't think that's, I, I don't think that's the case. So, um, well, I think um, I agree with Evan's point. We don't want to like bring back the playbooks from 20 years ago. I think sometimes we skip over the fundamentals and we skip straight to AI being our, our saving grace. And I, I'd encourage founders, sales leaders to, to think about that a little bit differently. 
Big time, especially er early on. Like one of the questions we get is, are we ready to to hire an, our first SDR? And and really, I, I'm, more and more, it's like if you throw a body at the problem or you just buy a bunch of sales technology and, and plug it in um, without having that that infrastructure in place behind the scenes and having it set up you're really setting up not only the SDR, but you are setting yourself up to fail unless you get this amazing unicorn who can figure it all out. Really, I, I would recommend get all the systems and processes set up first and then start adding people back in. And Evan, as, as you work with customers, do you see um, you know, ha their, their infrastructure is not quite ready for implementing a tool like <laughs> Lean Data sometimes? Yeah, sometimes I mean, for us, we really want to focus on the handoff. So I'll build on what Jason uh, said about like mm -hmm. thinking about from the sales perspective. And I think the most important thing you can do is make sure you kind of break down the silos and make sure things very transition really smoothly between mm -hmm. marketing, your SDRs, your sales reps, your CSMs, and make sure that all those flows. And that's not a technology thing. That's getting to a room, making sure you understand everything. And kind of what we kind of help with is making sure those handoffs and the orchestration is done really, really well. I point to like the movement of like RevOps, right? That was kind of like this kind of pie in the sky concept that all the ops teams could, could work together. And that really has taken off and we've seen a lot of benefits for that. And I, but, but I think we need to take that a step further and like the whole go-to-market teams really need to start really working well seamlessly together. Be and this is especially important before AI comes because if you add AI into a horrible process that, that has silos, you could have the AI bots, like imagine the AI bots in each little silo gets created and they all start like, they just magnify what's a bad process, right? And so I think it's really important that we take that step back. And it's actually easier for early stage companies. Uh, it's uh, like the RevOps movement was driven by earlier stage companies, not the largest companies, because you don't have those established silos in place. Um, mm -hmm. And so in some respects, figuring this out as early as you can will be uh, more beneficial and you'll end up with uh, a better process and coming up with new innovation. Okay. I just want to stay there for a second. Evan, if, if I dive in, uh, you know, the, a lot of organizations are set up from a, a system, you know, a, a hundred years ago where there's very set silos. You got marketing, SDR, sales, customer success. And in the best companies, who who's kind of sits over those to drive alignment across the go-to-market team? Because there's a lot of, uh, you know, dotted line yep. like reporting structures and you have to get work done through other people that don't necessarily report to you and so it, it, in my mind it was like there's supposed to be a cro who really whipped right. the whole go-to-market team into shape but i don't actually see that a lot in practice yeah, no, I think it's it, it's not so much as there's not a single title. Uh, it's like the question of like, where does RevOps report into? I've seen CROs, I've seen COOs, I've seen CFOs, right? Um, as sometimes I've, I've thought we were, uh, we've, uh, in the past, we've talked about like CEOs, right? So I think the, the key thing is who can kind of drive, has the process mentality, can think absolutely holistically uh, and drive that kind of change within the organization. So it may be a different title, but it's that, that person who has that mentality to do that. To your point, a lot of CROs are just really uh, 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 chief sales officers or VP of sales who only think about their silo, right? So again, you need the, someone with that mentality and the wherewithal to kind of uh, manage it all. Ultimately, in some respects, it is the CEO who needs to stitch it all together. But uh, I, I do think uh, uh, there are other functions that can make that happen, but it varies by organization. That's yeah, question. they used to call it whoever has the juice, right? <laughs> you get a lot of things done. They're usually the rock stars. Um, and and um, there's some that are coming up through the SDR world. Um, I, 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 I'll give you an example of Kyle Coleman came from an SDR to now he's the CMO of Clary. And um, he's got that mentality of stitching all these things together and driving that that u u uniformity forward. Um, so shout out to Kyle. He's he's awesome. A and um, Jonathan, if you think about all the stuff that we're learning um, as you're you're working directly with customers and you're getting that information back in, um, what what steps do you think companies should take to to prepare for the sales tech of of the future? 
<clears throat> yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a good <laughs> question. There's, there's a lot, right? I mean, the there. current that guys is AI. Someone mm-hmm. talking here that AI is uh, is not gonna mm-hmm. solve necessarily mm-hmm. probably can enhance them. It, it really depends on, on the process. I, I think it, it starts in the fundamentals. Mm-hmm. Like, can you answer like where are you a customer? What are they into? What separates you? You know, it's like it's like the philosophy. A lot of the time gets gets forgotten, especially when you have hyper growth and you have so many people thinking different things. Uh, get back to the, the, the philosophy and understanding. I have very very crisp answers along these lines. It feels like almost like the the, <laughs> the equivalence of uh, of a corporation going to uh, a Zen, you know Zen Buddhist uh, uh, retreat and asking those deep questions. But once you get the internal alignment on that, there's a lot of clarity and Zen around that. Then, then the technology can be layered up, up, upon that. I would, <clears throat> I would say, um, um, if you know, a basic way to think about it is like what we kind of what we talked about before. What can you do to make sure that people just do the highest act- high high activities and have as few me- meta activities that they need to do while still maintaining visibility for for managers? So, what can you do bottom up? What can you do from just like and like you said, the digital exhaust is a byproduct of people. Doing what they're doing and how you get the visibility in, into them. Into them, mm-hmm. once you have the clarity and you understand like your process and where you find your customers, how you engage them and, and what they need to see, then layering the technology can really work. Today, technologies are way more integrated than ever before, right? All everyone has a Salesforce integration for sure, and if not, you have like Zapier and a million other things where you can connect to what you need. And if you need an integration, it will come. The vendor will will come up with it. So. Mm-hmm. A lot, so I think it's really a Lego, um, a Lego piece. You're not, you're not, you're not married, at, and there's no silver bullet. It's really, it's really. Um, um, I think it's it's the, the, there's a vision there, and then on top of that, you layer the tech stack, and that can be factored by a lot of things. Sometimes just a CRO with their own perspective, sometimes legacy systems that were in and working. Um, but yeah, that's how I would start. Think bottom up and think uh, and go back to basics and like the Zen of what you're trying to do and lay that out clearly. Okay, we'll, we'll set up a retreat and and I, I like that. And and you know, I think it, it sometimes, especially as you get bigger, it's like you start to forget about the customers almost, and and um, and you don't have that that intimate knowledge of how they go through the sales cycle and how they find out about you and you know. And, and stuff like that. And it's just, let's throw technology and, and bodies at the problem. And it's like, we got to get back to basics. How, right. how, how do we actually interact with the people that are paying the bills? Um, and so that the, the big question that's coming out is, um, and I'll throw this to Jason, do you, do you think that at some point can technology, especially sales technology, can it, can it replace human beings? I think, it, you know, we're looking at things from both sides. As a CEO, you have to run the company really efficiently. So it'd be great to get rid of all the people and have, uh, you know, uh, 1% of the payroll. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, right now, are we ready? Um, or in the future, can at some point, will the sales technology be able to replace people? That's the deep philosophical question, right? Um, you know, I have, I definitely have some ideas on this. Um, you know, certainly technology is getting more powerful. Like there's things that technology is automating and making obsolete and making sales reps more efficient. At least that's today. I think it's really easy to look at, you know, some of the new AI technology, extrapolate that out 10 years and be like, well, look, of course it's going to replace all of our jobs. and. You know, I think it really, you really have to think about fundamentally what a salesperson is. Are they something that just spits out a bunch of text and a bunch of words? I think there, there was an idea that because of the internet, um, people could research whatever they wanted about the product. So why would you have to have a salesperson? You can find out whatever information you want online. But is that really what the salesperson is doing? I would argue no, because I, I think the point of a salesperson is to be someone that the customer likes and trusts. And the reason the salesperson is there is because the customer wants to have a relationship with someone at the company. And so I don't think that it's like AI gets more powerful. It spits out text. It gives you information about the product and therefore, you know, sales is sales is over. If anything, it makes it potentially more important where people want proof that they're talking to a human. You know, they want someone um, 
you know, they, they really want someone's neck on the line for, for the outcome. So I think that, I think people are a little bit ahead of themselves. I, you know, you go into your kitchen, you start yelling at Alexa and it can barely do basic things for us. And then out of the other side of our mouth, we're like, it's taking all of our jobs tomorrow. So I don't, I don't want to, um, obviously like this will look really bad in 10 years when all of our jobs are replaced by, by AI. But I think like one, we're in the short to midterm, I'm not really worried about salespeople's jobs going away. And I think in the long term, it's a deeper philosophical question, but at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, our mission at Orm is to empower salespeople and we have other companies and we have VCs saying, well, aren't you just going to replace the salesperson? Wouldn't that be great? And that's not really a vision that, that I'm excited about, nor do I think is really going to solve a, a problem, um, over the long term. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm thinking about it, but there's definitely some compelling demos out there that get people thinking. Definitely. And, and there's I hope am. for humans for right now. Evan, what do you think? Yeah, I'll build upon what Jason and uh, what I started off by saying that, hey, SDR outbound activities are, are, are not being as fruitful. What we are seeing and talking to other CEOs is that kind of events are kind of being successful, especially smaller events, dinners and bring folks back. And that builds exactly on Jason says people want that human connection. Right. And so a lot of the activities, if, 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 if all sales is, is just automating emails and sending emails. And there are there are some people from the pandemic who that's all they like to do. Right. Yes, that can get automated. But if you can actually go out and meet people and have that human connection, yeah, that 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 won't be replaced by AI. Right. Uh, because that's that's about the, the, the meeting people face to face and making that happen. And and I think we've gotten a little bit out of practice out of the pandemic, but that's coming back in force in my mind. And that is the part that where humans will excel over uh, over AI. And so I think some tasks will go to AI, but other tasks, that human element will become even more important. And I, like I said, we're seeing that already uh, as events are coming back uh, and, and, and people are, are craving that. It's not even the big events. Uh, the, some of the events that we love are the dinners, really small, intimate dinners where you really get to meet people and connect with people and learn from, from folks, right? Those are the things that I think uh, uh, sales uh, uh, will get back to uh, and, and must, and, and it will be even more successful than it was in the past because we've had a couple of years of the pandemic. I got to say, I attended events as a, as a salesperson recently. I, I won't date myself, but um, I had a fabulous time. I didn't run into any uh, robots and made <laughs> tons of connections tons of prospects it was awesome and i felt it felt great after three years of the zooms so and also 10 bound puts on the premier sales technology events that are live so i'll be in touch with all you guys after this <laughs> to talk more about that uh, jonathan what do you think if if uh if we get to the point can can we run demos with people where we don't have to pay a salesperson anymore so what I think it's going to happen is, is essentially it's going to be the rise of the agents. Okay. Essentially, every um, human and I think every corporation too will have essentially almost like a digital agent um, representing it. And I really like the, the way I think about it, is like it's like almost a subconscious, right? You have this subconscious mind that's monitoring a lot of things, like because you know I know when if someone will call my name in the background, I will hear it, but I'm not paying attention to the background right now. So, but something is right in my mind. Uh, so same thing would be that those agents, I think uh, everyone will have an agent and then a lot of negotiation, low level negotiation will be through that. A th th those agents will become more and more powerful. Remember the days where you didn't want to put your credit card on the Internet because it could get stolen or who knows who's on the other side. Right. And today you're like swiping like uh, like you don't even think about it. So same thing with the agent. Hey, do you give them a credit card? That sounds crazy. And a few years, of course you do. And they have access to all your banks and finances and they can make low uh, you know, they know they need you need to buy your wife uh, a gift. So automatically that's going to happen. Right. And the, and you have that automation and the, the trust and especially the kids that will grow up with AI agents, their sh their digital shadow will be so strong that uh, they will have full trust in this thing. It always was around them all life. They recorded every word, saw every text. Uh, was with them in the hardest moment. So the more trust you have in that shadow self, the more it can negotiate for you to represent you. And um and I think the, the highest um, strength it will have is be able to call you up and grab your attention, right? When your agent calls, you are receptive. So it can negotiate all the stuff like, yeah, I want to meet David. Go, right? So that he knows my intention and then it handles everything else. 
So when it comes to sales, I think these agents will have a lot of negotiation. The agent will maybe identify, do, you know, fine. And eventually we'll call up the human to do the final deal transaction. That's where the human connection will come in. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm talking now about something that could take, you know, a decade or more to, to unfold. But I do believe more and more lower level negotiations are going to be digital. Mm-hmm. But the connection of mind will stay human for the time being. And once it doesn't, then this calls irrelevant because we, you know, humans have transcended. And, uh, you know, we were in a different place altogether. <laughs> it's true. I would love if I could call my agent and say, give me a bunch of meetings at the event that I'm going to right. and then show up at the event and work in the, the human element to start that relationship. It's cake and ice cream. So we're getting there. Yeah, but but uh, I yeah, really good point. And uh, it, it makes me think like. Um, you know, just uh, I saw an Instagram post where you could create a deep fake of yourself and with your your own voice, your picture and everything. And then actually it would create scripts for you based on the keywords that are important to your clients. And so you could just sort of deploy that into the atmosphere and hopefully it works. I, I don't know. Um, it's we'll see. Yeah, exactly. This is great. You guys, this has been so helpful. And um, I think that the big takeaways really are we have to get back to basics uh, with the the processes and the training and really make sure that if we're, we have human interactions that we're on point and and, uh, it, you know, we're not blowing it. Uh, to, and, and that takes the old school, you know, soft skills, training, making sure that people are equipped the back end processes are on point, everything's plugged in and prioritized. And we take the technology as far as we can to really empower the human being sell- selling process. And, uh, and don't just try to wing it, you know, don't, don't just start throwing technology and, and people at a problem. Um, you really have to architect it properly and make sure that uh, you get the best return on your investment in these technology solutions. So this has been great. Thank you guys so much for participating in the Revenue Excellence Summit today. I definitely, you know, got the sales fever. And, um, you know, we took at it from a totally different angle. So if anybody wants to learn more about what you guys are working on, um, Jason, what's the best way to get in touch? www.orum.com, O-R-U-M. All right. Is there an agent there or can they talk to you? They can talk to a real live human. They can also add me on LinkedIn and I tend to be pretty responsive there as well. Excellent. Evan? Yeah, I think the same, uh, leandata.com and I'm also available on uh, LinkedIn as Evan Liang. And so uh, love to connect with folks or, uh, you know, I... Uh, David, you, uh, you, we have, we also have an event that uh, coincides with Dreamforce called Opstars. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, f- I think for folks uh, in 2024, please uh, come check that out. So, highly, highly recommended, uh, and it's one of my favorite things to do each year. So, definitely attend. And uh, Jonathan, yeah, uh, same uh, demostack.com. Um, I love to about everything, everything demos, uh, LinkedIn, you can follow me or connect. Uh, yeah, I talk a lot about, uh, about this stuff as well. Very passionate about it. So, um, great. Thanks everybody. And thanks for coming to the summit. Um, leave a comment and hit the next session. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun.